call this special meeting to order. Roll call of aldermen. Alderman Hazel? Here. Alderman Kinsella? Here. Alderwoman Pusa? Here. Alderman Bittner? Here. Alderman Randall? Here. Alderman Tyler? Here. Alderman Anthony? Here. Alderman Ovian? Here. Alderwoman Schaefer? Here. Alderman Gentleman? Alderman Gott? Here. Alderwoman Steele? Alderman Wygott? Here. Alderman Elmore? Here. Alderman Wigington? Alderman Barfield? Here. Alderman Wigington, Dittleman, and Steele are excused. We do have a quorum. Uh, this special meeting was called tonight, um, and I'll explain in just a little bit more of the detail. But before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and ask you if, you, if you're able, to please stand with me for the pledge. Good evening. Um, this is a special meeting. I will just note from the beginning, there is no, there is no action to be taken at this meeting tonight. Um, I want to start before we get into a few comments to uh, explain a few things since we met last. We are videotaping the meeting, as we always do, and, and it's also audio recorded. Alderman, please speak in the microphone. We're having more and more trouble hearing the tape. So you've got to speak into the microphone and speak up. Second of all, when we do call the public at that point, when I recognize you and you go to the microphone in there in the center, please speak into it. Give your name. Try to keep your comments to two to three minutes. Uh, the topic tonight is about the uh, increase in fees that's being proposed. So we should be speaking primarily about that tonight. We have another council meeting um, next Monday at 7. And um, so, so just so you're aware. Um, we have no, I did not demand or ask any alderman, I mean, department has to be here other than our city clerk is here, Jennifer Gainmeyer, and uh, I have uh, my IT guy here, Rich Peppers, and, and then also Jamie Matrix, my finance director. Other than that, I didn't, um, I didn't request that they all add another night meeting tonight. So what I want to just say before we open this for a discussion, I, I want to just kind of go back. First of all, um, some of you have been in different meetings or different council meetings. Some of you come more often than others, and, and you may have heard me. Some of you have come up to me over the period of times here and there, maybe when I'm in your establishment or you stop me on the street. And I've made it very clear to the aldermen, to my staff, and to anybody who's chosen to bring the topic up, this has probably been, in all my years as mayor, the toughest year we've ever had is putting a budget together. And, and that's for a lot of reasons. One, there's no two ways about it. Income tax in the state of Illinois is down. Now, we can sit here all night and debate that, but the facts are, two years in a row, we're down about, Jamie, and correct me if I'm wrong, jump up and down, but about a half million dollars each year we've been down. And normally we could pretty well predict income tax within 99% of what we projected we got. So we were startled a year ago, two years ago, when our income tax, and that's because if you've read any articles or newspaper stories or listened to some news stations, the state of Illinois has lost citizens, about 34, 35,000, and some businesses. And so therefore, the pot of money that we all get a percentage of in the income tax, which is a big chunk of our, uh, our, our, um, our income, uh, was, a, was, a, was a terrible hit. When, when, the, when the recession hit in, some will tell you, it was, the, the stock market fell down in September of 08, I believe. I'm, I don't know if there might be some financial experts here. But it really didn't hit us real hard, Jamie, until 2010 when the, our, LG, our, our uh, local government distributive fund, we lost $751,000 from the state of Illinois with no warning. And that was a horrible time because when you lose $751,000 out of your budget with no warning, um, 
folks, our, our big items are police and fire. Our general fund proposed this year, just to, I'm just doing a little bit of homework here to explain to you, where, so you, if you're interested, and I hope you are, because I think it's important that we, you know, get the whole picture. Our general fund, which is our operating, is right at $28 million, $28.1 million. 60% of that goes to the police and fire department. And I found very few people who have an issue with that because everybody wants the police to come when you need them. And if somebody sees smoke, they sure want that little red, that big red truck to come. And we've been blessed for a lot of years with, with outstanding police and fire protection. But it costs money. So we have been cutting. Ever since the recession, I will tell you, um, when I took over being mayor, we had like 21 people in sanitation and 21 in the street department. I think one's got 15 this year, one's got 14. I know somebody the other night came back to me and said, we should cut sanitation. Well, sanitation is the only city service that we make money. Am I correct, Jamie? The revenues cover the expenses, and we and if you count that sometimes we take some of the equipment possibly out of another fund, the TIF fund, um, we might make a little some years. But my point is, if we didn't have it, we would would lose that revenue, and and then those people would lose the job, of course. But keep in mind the sanitation, because this was brought up by a couple of people. The sanitation also is available to us to go, when they're done at the end of the day, and they have a lot of stops, uh, we send them to pick up different areas that are, that are trashed and littered with mattresses and junk and people dumping off couches and all kinds of things. Many of you call. Somebody dumps something in your neighborhood or around your business, then we call those guys to go get it. And they, so it, that service for us is also part of why we're able to keep Belleville as clean as we are. So much said for that. Now. There was a comment made the other day, and I, I just first of all want you to know, we appreciate your, your being here. We appreciate your businesses. Most of you in this room, many of you, my wife or family and I have been in many times to eat or have a, a beverage with friends or whatever. So we're not strangers to you, and we, we do want your business. The other thing about our, our revenue, probably one of the other big revenue components for the city is sales tax. And thank goodness this past year or two, oddly enough, sales tax has been one of the revenues that actually has been consistent or up many months. And that's not always been the case in the past. So we are very appreciative. We want you to be successful. Now, in case somebody wasn't here the other night, let me just say this and then we'll open discussion in a second. It's probably been a big mistake, but we haven't raised liquor fees. I know in 10, Scotty said the other day it's been 13 years. Somebody else told me it was a dozen. It's somewhere between 10 and 13 years since we've raised the liquor license. When you came to me, many of you, and we talked about gaming approximately five, six years ago, I told you then I didn't. I wasn't against it. I voted for it. I told you we need to put it on the ballot. Some of you were afraid that wasn't going to work. And I said right away to many of you, I believe if it gets on the ballot and we give the public an opportunity, it's going to pass. <clears throat> it passed by a good chunk. And we have gaming. And at the time, there were some aldermen who bent my ear and wanted me. It's a whole different council today in many respects, too. A lot of different people. But there was a lot of them wanted us to charge $500 a sticker the very first year. And I said, no. I said, that's not right. Give them a chance to get on their feet. Now, we have not raised sticker fees since we started. And it's probably because I just, but this year we had to look at a lot of different things to start to review. Now, I will tell you, a few comments that came to my office is, well, how come you're not raising these other fees? Folks, we're going to review a lot of stuff. But I would have been really criticized had we tried to propose raising everything in one year. That would have been wrong. 
Now maybe it seems like we picked on the bar owners or restaurant owners this year, but a $10 increase in the special use permit, I don't think is nobody, nobody screamed about that. And really, I haven't really heard any real complaints about increasing liquor license the first time in 10 to 13 years. The biggest conversation has been about gaming. So here's what I listened the other night, and here's what I went back, and Jamie and I went back. And if you didn't get one of these, there should be some on the back table. My proposal, because we have to do something, we, we are struggling. My proposal is in listening to you that this April, when your things are due, we only go up $100. We go from $100 to $200 per sticker, and we wait to next April to go up to $300 a sticker. That will give, and then the other thing we clarified is, I'm proposing. There was a comment made that because for the first time we want to charge a terminal operator's fee of $500. And it was said here that it was believed that we, you would have to pay half of that. And that has been researched and it's not true. We are home rule. The terminal operators will have to pay that fee. So. That's 250 you won't have to pay. And I'm proposing that this April, instead of a $1,000 increase if you have five machines, there would be a $500 increase from what you've been paying. So I want you to know we're listening. That would be $750 less than what most of you the other night when you were here thought you were gonna have to come out of your pocket by April, by, by the time the, the license were due. You know. I wish we could say we could continue to go on. We are going to have to look at other fees. Can I sit here and tell you we won't raise liquor licenses again for 10 years? I can't promise you that, but I also can tell you I'm sure in 10 years I'm not going to be sitting here. Somebody else is going to have to make those decisions or recommendations. But we probably should have done it. Maybe we should have done it a little bit at a time. Hindsight's always 2020. But this is the first time there's been a recommendation to raise any of these fees. In five years for gaming, since we started with you, and in 10 years at least for liquor. So I wanted to clarify that so everybody knows what we're proposing. I'm proposing this to the council because I, I did hear you, we did hear you, my staff heard you, and we went back and Jenny and I and my city attorney and Jamie, we sat the next day and we talked about it. And this is what we came up with that we you know, we feel like we can still stay on track with our budget, and we feel like we can help you by, by being understanding. So I'm going to start with that, and I mean, I wanted to clarify that. Jamie, do you have anything else you want to, that you, anything else I missed that you want to comment on about as far as the budget or any other statistics that might help them understand? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. The biggest misconception that I heard the other night was that um, these bar owners were going to be footing the $180,000 fee increase bill. That $180,000 of the fee increases was for all of those increases combined. You guys approved most of them, um, which accounted for the vast majority of the revenue. The um, ones that are up tonight in total would only approximate about $60,000 towards the budget. Yeah, 120 of the 180 were, were other, the other fees that you all approved the other night. You know which once again, I think we talked about, we hadn't raised the $25 increase in occupancy or inspections hadn't been raised in many, many years. So that's where a big chunk, that was $70,000 of the additional new revenue right there. So we're not, and, and, and let me just say this, the budget's 28.1 million, and the number of total fees that are being proposed to increase initially was 180,000. Um, that's only like, less than 1%, it's, it's like six-tenths of 1% of our budget. So we're not balancing this budget on fees. That was a misconception that came out of here that, oh, they're just trying to raise all the fees to balance their budget, and that's, that's not true. We're just trying to be realistic that over a period of years, we need to, we, and, and we should have, and, and like I told you, in hindsight, we probably should have raised the liquor license $50 every two years or something like that. And, and we wouldn't have had to hit you with 150 after 10 years. Or every three years, maybe we should have done that. I guess that's a, that's a reasonable way to look at it. But we didn't. And, and we, we, we made a conscious effort 
not to raise anything from 2008 till the last couple of years because everybody's been trying to crawl out of this recession. But you know, the, the only other fee that really went up on here was if you're a new applicant, and we took that up from 250 to 500. If you're a first time liquor license person, and some of you may remember, and I can give you, somebody wants to talk to me personally, I can tell you, uh, my staff and I, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of meetings with people getting the first time liquor license set up, understood, inspections, et cetera. There's a lot of contact. It's very cumbersome, and we felt that this was a fair increase. So with that, um, I'm going to open it uh, to the public. And um, anybody wants to ask questions or comment on what I just, what I'm suggesting. And then the council got this the other day. I, I just came back two hours ago from Washington, D.C. And, and uh, so I didn't get to talk to everybody about this, but we sent it out. They should have got it a couple days ago. I'm sorry, I don't know when. I think you got it a couple, I should have been. It was emailed to you a couple days ago. But if you, and it's all been on your desk tonight. So if anybody, and there's some copies back there, if you all want some, we can make some more if you didn't get one. But this is, uh, uh, so we're, we're open if somebody wants to uh, comment. Alderman, do you, do you want to comment? Any questions? Yes, sir. question was, why are you only looking at video gaming as the only new source of revenue? I would propose thought and discussion of a new fee that we have not discussed, and I will tell you it is not a huge revenue producer. Rather, it's an effort to be fair to all in the bar, tavern, and restaurant business and simply put everyone on the same playing field. We are proposing additional business fees each terminal that a business owner in this industry chooses to offer. They are unique with their video games and it generates a unique revenue. We also have a unique way of revenue being generated by outdoor dining tables and they are on our public property. I see no reason that we cannot charge a fee for each terminal and charge a fee for each table that is on our sidewalk. Right now there are approximately 50 tables at four different restaurants. At $25 in 2018 or $35,000 in 2019, we remove the notion that we are only taking on video games. These tables generate extra unique revenue that as a terminal does. And again, these are on public property. And I love them. But we need to do what's right here. Okay. The terminal. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to explain. The terminal fee currently at $100 going up to $200. I think it should stop right there for, a while, for the time being. I'm not saying that they'll not go up someday, but we can certainly wait, especially if we do some of these other things. I have no <coughs> issue with 500 per location fee charged to the vendor, not the bar owner. On the liquor license, I think another classification that could be designed for the neighborhood bar that doesn't have a kitchen and a food service license, they can't possibly be making as much revenue as a restaurant. The application fee for new bars, I think, could even be raised higher than the 500. I'm not convinced we need that many more bars in Belleville. Certainly not a bar that can't afford a thousand dollar license, for example. And that's all I have. Okay, let me, let me I can clarify one thing. Some of these things we've talked about over time, okay? Yes. I guess that goes with me sitting here for a while or being involved. I, but one of the things, as far as the downtown streetscape, let me first of all explain and remind the council that all the downtown businesses from 6th Street to Oak Street in a two block 
Main Street, each direction of, of East and West Main, they are taxed. They have a special service district tax. And they're paying a big chunk right now towards the streetscape. They're paying 1.3, 1.25 million. They bonded 1.25 million that they pay out of their tax. Plus, that group gives the city back $10,000 at least every year towards police. So to go and add a table fee when they're already taxing themselves and they're helping pay for police, which is our biggest overtime expense. Jamie, last year, our overtime for police, and this isn't, but it's like 600000 Okay, I was trying to be nice. 750000 Now, that's all overtime. And believe me, we have some people are paying for overtime. One of you, I'm not sure I remember exactly, but a couple years back, I think it was 2012, we added um, the, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which will be this Saturday, has gotten bigger. And I know some will say the St. Patrick's Day Parade only helps the downtown bars. But I think St. Patrick's Day has brought a lot of people back to Belleville, and I, I really believe, I've, I've been from west to east, and I've come eat corn, you know, uh, uh, corned beef at many of the places from one end of town to the other. And I think the parade has helped us keep some people from going to St. Louis, keep them over here in Belleville. But we voted then, and we have never changed. We don't charge, we don't ask each bar owner to ante up for the St. Patrick's Day parade. We added that as another free parade, and that cost us, Jamie, about, what did we figure, 12000 roughly? For the police and the cleanup, about $12,000 the city pays for that St. Patrick's Day parade. And I, I just, you know, I gotta be, you know, these are things we're looking at. Now, what do we do? Do we come back and start charging for parades? I can't charge Santa Claus. Uh, I, I, I certainly can't charge a Memorial Day parade. But I'm, I'm just saying. So we are doing some things, but I think that you understand. People, a lot of people don't know that the downtown businesses tax themselves. No, I'm fully aware of that. And we do generate some revenue, a little bit of an uptick like on St. Patrick's Day parade. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And, and uh, um, like I said before, there's something right someplace because Sales tax in December, Jamie, was up 6% from a year ago. No? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you got my hopes up. I thought we were actually, but it, it was 3% in November. So in November, we had about a $35,000 increase from the year before November. Okay, I'm still happy about that. But, um, so December should have been up more. That, that's kind of scary. And that's the biggest thing there is, is online shopping. Online shopping is killing our merchants. Um, so anyway, um, yes, sir? I looked at this whole proposal, and there's one part of it that bothers me, and that is we're looking at increasing the business license fee from 25 to $50. It's not equitable for everybody. We've got professional employees that have never been touched. We've got retail establishments that have never been touched. So what I'm proposing tonight, everybody in the city of Belleville that operates a business across the board pays a hundred dollar fee annually. Okay. Raffi. 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 Okay. And we're looking at this. And let me let me finish what I started to say. We sat and talked with the attorney the other day. And we have a little bit more research because it is against state statute just to raise fees to try to raise revenue and to raise a category. There has to, we're looking at right now, and we're going to continue to research how to tie it maybe to the fire inspection. Uh, we're, we're researching because there's different, I agree with you, but can we get this done by May 1st? The answer is no. The answer is no. We can't, we got, we got, is Jenny, am I correct? We got a lot, we got some stuff to research yet. Yeah, I'm still talking with the fire chief and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we still got some things. We, we agree. We agree with, and we, we brought this up. Our, our staff has. But we're, we weren't quite ready with everything going on this year, just moving back and everything that's been happening. We got some more work to do. And according to Garrett, who's not here tonight, but who did sit with us after the last council meeting, and he said, we got to do some research because there are some 
some things there we got to make sure that we're following the law. So we are working on it, but I it can't we're not we're not taking any motions at this meeting tonight. It'll be next Monday. But I can tell you we do have some research to do yet on looking at raising just generally all fees. So who else had a comment? Barry? Yeah, for me. Mr. Mayor, yes. Ms. Clark, Alderman, thank you for giving us the opportunity to at least talk for a change. We very much appreciate this opportunity. Alderman Silsby said after we discussed this at the last City Council meeting about these fee increases that we'd get together and talk. We appreciate the opportunity to do this now. Mr. Mayor, you asked me, I should have included video gaming fees in that last report from last week. Well, the top handout is about 347 communities in their video gaming fees. You'll see there's a broad spectrum of charges, and we're still among some of the higher fees. I went a little further. And I also, right after that large handout, is another one. That includes our liquor license fees in comparison to the surrounding communities, and our video gaming fees on the next page in comparison to the surrounding communities. I didn't cherry pick anything. I just went around, and those are the facts that are real. If you look at some of the higher gaming fees, they have some of the lower liquor license fees, with the one exception. I viewed the proposal that the revised increases, and we very much appreciate that there was a lessening, but basically it's almost like lipstick on a pig. It's only been pushed off a year. It's still focusing on our hospitality industry. You look around. The next handout is some of the f locations that's on the proposed fees. If you look at those, they have lower net terminal incomes than we do. And why do you think that is? because of the fees. We're the mom and pop businesses around. When we get our fees, it's reinvested right here in our community, in our area, in the lumber companies, in Home Depot. I can't tell you, they know me on a first name basis out there. The next handout is the list of our business license fees and stuff in Belleville. A bed and breakfast pays $75, but a motel pays 25 Now, who has more rooms and can better afford a fee? A vehicle vending food, $50. But yet, look at the fees we're required to pay. How much sales tax have we collected from these vendors, these vehicle fees? I see one parked on North Belt weekly. I see an, one on North Illinois. We even had one, or about eight of them, at the uh, West Belleville Promotion Fundraiser. But what is the city reaping in benefits from it as far as sales tax revenue? The Queen of Hearts drawing, $25. We all know there's thousands and thousands of dollars involved in those. $25 is ludicrous. 
almost laughable. A secondhand dealer, $25. We ask a secondhand dealer to pay $25, but yet I have to pay $50 for a coin operated gumball machine in my place, or a dart machine, or a pinball, and not just $50 for all of them, it's $50 for each and every one. I can't imagine what the fees that the Edge pays when it comes to coin operated machines, but I'm sure they'll probably enlighten us. When it comes to the proposals, liquor license fees, $100 to $800 right now. And I think most of us in this room are paying $800. For a one hour license to serve one additional hour, it's costing us $4.16 a minute just for one hour of service. That's ridiculous. I mean, it's crazy. Alton has a license, goes till 3 o'clock. Nobody's asking for that around here. In our industry, we can't hardly find workers. If you're not working in our industry now, it's because you don't want a job. I haven't had a full staff in 13 months. Just this past month, I lost three workers. One went to Freeburg, paying them $13 an hour as a cook, but they went to Freeburg for higher wages because they don't have video gaming fees to pay. They have a higher net terminal income. Hofbrau House just took one of my cooks. The went, apparently more wages. I interviewed bartenders just a couple of weeks ago. A venue just one mile outside the city limits, or less than a mile, paying 45% more an hour than I can afford to pay my help. We have so many fees and restrictions right here in Belleville. Mouse races, for instance, we banned those. There were six schools that had fundraisers scheduled that had to either be canceled or moved. I had one at my place scheduled, it moved. Same place, the bartender's getting more money, just less than a mile outside the city limits. That's fees and revenue that the city's missing out on, but yet, those have been approved by the Illinois Gaming Board. Barry? Okay. Just so you know, for mouse races, that's actually illegal by state law. It's illegal by state law. So when law. they call, we simply tell them, we will not license you. Okay. That's, and that's a problem. fact. The Gaming Board approved it and they, said they, it was approved no, by our no, gaming no, agent. They, no, they we've told us to they them. consider mouse racing the same as they would consider um, horse racing. Anything with live animals, you have to have a special approval from the state. Okay. So yeah. And, and Great. So, but, and there was one other thing you said a second ago. We... Oh, just so you know, on the fee license from, that you have of ours, yes. the food vending truck, that actually is obsolete. We now have a mobile commerce vendor, which is food trucks, that we incorporated a and couple months ago. That's very detailed. That's a $100 fee. That actually moved into, we created a whole new category for I took that off the city website. Yeah, so. they're just not updated yet. They're, they're not due to be updated until the end of March. I can only yeah. work with the figures yeah, that no, no, we provide. You know I appreciate it. We did do the food, vent, food trucks, though, separately. The hospitality industry. For every one opening, we lose two, three, or five. Think about the last year alone. You had shenanigans, fishers, IHOP. Marco's on Main, and the Red Onion, all gone. Our state liquor license fee increased by 50% last year alone. Just one license. And again, our net terminal is $6,602 below the state average. Level the playing field for us. No one knows the exact amount of businesses we have in Belleville. I've been making numerous calls, going all around. The best I can find is from the city fire department, who
who estimates somewhere between 2,300 and 2,400 businesses. Let's say we take 100 of those out, being bars, restaurants, junk stores, auctioneers or something, throw those out. Even better yet, let's be more conservative. Let's throw two to 300, 400 out and figure 2,000 businesses. 2,000 businesses at $100 a piece is $200,000 we could have tomorrow. If you look in our handout, three years ago, March 13, 2015, I was up somewhere in this vicinity and spoke at that time. Please institute a business license so it's fair for all businesses. We also proposed, as Mr. Elmore already suggested, a $1,000 application fee. Don't let a Johnny come lately come in and try to sell dollar beers or something where you're having headaches every night of the week, businesses getting broken windows or cars broken into in the area. Get people who are serious about being professional owners. Let's grow together. Our video gaming industry has brought in over $954,000 to this city already. 307,000, almost 308,000 last year alone, up 12.2% from the year before. So it is a growing business. There's been proposals to the state legislature already about increasing the betting limit about increasing the payout on the games, about creating player reward systems. Let's grow the industry instead of trying to stifle it as some of the comparison figures from those other municipalities. And it's proven, if you look at the net terminal income, don't look at the short picture, look at the big picture around. Help our businesses. There's several liquor licenses, but only three of them were proposed to be increased. Here, I think you're looking at most people with A and B licenses, though. We're getting hit with fees and taxes constantly. It seems to always fall back on our, on our backs, basically. To get back to business of licenses, if we talk about 200,000, from 200 businesses. Think about attorneys in this town. They're, according to Martindale Hubble, 1,300 attorneys in this town. If each one of those paid some money, think what you'd have. Those attorneys comprise 166 law firms. So even at $100 a law firm, $16,600. Some of these law firms have over 100 attorneys involved. If you charge $25 per additional attorney, that would be another $28,350. Just from the law community, you're generating $45,950. Physicians, and I'm not picking on attorneys for any, that's just one of the areas in our community. Physicians, there's no real way to tell exactly how many groups there are, but there's 340 physician profiles in our city of Belleville. That's huge numbers. I mean, just from those few figures, you're looking at an increase in revenue of why look at 36,000 or 40,000 out of us when we can spread this around across the board instead of on the backs of the hospitality industry? Level the playing field. I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. I will answer any questions that I can. Alderman Bittner. Yes, sir. Well, this year, one of the issues is you have a Speaker of the House that's Democrat and a Republican governor, and they're, 
even though they're wanting to increase revenue, which will increase the gaming fees, I'm not sure it's going to pass this time because the Speaker of the House doesn't want the governor to take credit for anything. So I would imagine probably next year you will see an, something like that. Thank goodness. Mike, would you use a microphone? It's the video cafes or casinos was the biggest opposition to City of Belleville having video gaming. Period. That was the biggest fight we had when that was put on the ballot. So at that time, we were happy to go along. The legislator later made this for bars and restaurants as a way to offset the losses that happened as a result of the smoking ban, but yet increase fees and revenue for the state as well as the city and county. I think Alderman Bittner, what he's pointing out, Barry, you're, everybody should be aware, we have an ordinance prohibiting the gaming parlors. And it's tied to, Jenny, they have to have so much revenue from food or beverage, and, and, and the majority of the revenue cannot come from gaming. So where some of the communities have the local Lucy's, I'm just, it's a brand that sticks out because they were trying to get a license here in Belleville, and, and we've said no to that. So we've stuck by you because our comment to them, and I've had to meet with many of them and their attorneys, and we've said, we, the, the reason we supported this whole gaming was to support our local brick and mortar businesses that have been here. So we did do that. Most of the communities around here don't do that. They have them. There's a lot of them that have yeah. them. And the other thing on your list is to remind everybody, when you say that a lot of communities only have a $25 fee, that's because they're non-home rule. And that's all by law of the state. They can charge if you're not home rule. So I can guarantee you if they were home rule, some of these communities would all be raising We completely up. understand that. Yeah. They're not home rule. Right. But the problem is, we still compete with them. I, I'm not There's sure. one video gaming place, I'm sorry for the interruption, but just down the street from me, that if you look online, their income was $259,000 last year. Anybody in Belleville would love to have that. That's a possibility, but as Mr. Elmore will talk, there was a huge amount or a coalition against this. They did not want the casino cafes was the biggest argument against it. But that was five years ago, and, and like you said, you know, right down the street, I know Ruby. Right. right, that's what I'm talking right about. Yes. My question would be to that is, those places are not owned locally. They're not mom and pop operations like you see setting in any of these rows here. We all live right here in the community. We invest in the community. Tonight, I wish I was at my business working. We're hosting an event for the Belleville West wrestling team. I can't be there for the banquet because of this. And yes, you probably would have more money if that's the way you'd want to go on it. Well, believe me, I'm behind you guys. I do not want Thank you. fees raised. I really don't. I, I don't think we should. I, I don't like the idea. You know, we're talking $60,000 right now is what we're talking. And a two, $28 million budget? Yeah. I but, mean, mean Alderman Bittner, I mean, I'm, I put, I'm not going to put you on spot, but I mean, these fees haven't been raised in 10 years. Well, I understand At least. That. So these guys, you hear them, they, they, they come up here I, and they're hurting. You know, I understand, and, and we've been people. very, we've been very understanding. Okay, and there's people leaving the state of Illinois all the time. 
businesses are closing all the time. Well, I'm, not, I'm not denying that fact. But I think $60,000, we can't come up. Sales tax, our projections, we have, I saw in the papers, you know, Motomore is, is expanding. We're going to have them. If the Hofbrau House projection, they're supposed to open next month. Now, a year's sales tax on the Hofbrau House is $87,000. That's what we're, we, we should uh, project that's going to happen. Nine months of that revenue is $75,000. We got our sixty grand. Why, why can't we hold off? Well, then we, here's what we have, though. We have a proposal that I'm proposing, $100 this April, and ex explanation that there's no increase on their behalf for a terminal operator's fee. So it's not to say that it can't be amended. We're saying, I'm saying that the second, the second 100 wouldn't be owed until next April. But, you know, I think by then we're going to have a review of our business licenses and something could be amended if indeed those things happen. But let's also be honest, and I've been saying this for a long time, I'm going to be appointing a committee to review what happens when TIF 3 goes away by May 1st because it ends in 2021. And when TIF 3 goes away, we have a drastic amount of adjusting to do on our, on our budgets. And, and so, you know, that's, was it, Jeff, Jamie, $6 million that we pay out of, out of that TIF for infrastructure towards the city streets and sewers and everything, is that correct? And, and, and some comes back to the general fund because the way it was written for administratively, et cetera. So those things are all gonna have to be made up. Um, so, I mean, we're gonna have some education that we're all gonna have to sit down and educate ourselves on that. So we got some challenges. Uh, but this is, I'm, what my proposal tonight is for the council for next Monday is that this April we raise $100 and we raise the liquor license the first time in 10 years to the, the 150. Is that what, is what it is, right? Is that what the proposal yeah. is? Yeah. And, and so we have compromised. I'm proposing a compromise. And, and, and also clarification that you don't have to pay that 250. That that's totally that 500 is paid by the terminal operators. But uh, I mean, we're, and this is not meant to be bashing, but there's, we are going to study, and we are already started studying all businesses, and there's a lot of things to study yet, and, and a lot of this stuff has been this way forever. However, there's no secret. I mean, the police department, and I'm not saying all the overtime is because of, of, of bar owners by any means, that's not true, but I think you can agree, many of you, uh, there's, there's uh, especially on that, when, talk, when it was talked about earlier about the 2 a.m. license, uh, I think most people who have a 2 a.m. license probably do call the police probably more than some of you ever have called the police. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Yes, ma'am. I'm just curious. Um, I understand the proposal is $100 this year. Why, why do we have to say $100 next year? Well, wait to see where we're at. You, 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 that. You, can, you can do that, Shelley. I'm just saying we, we, we agreed. I proposed and actually fought for only going $100 five years ago. Because like I said, at the time, I think if I wouldn't have basically stood up for you, I think the alderman might have had enough votes at that time to go much higher initially, when it, when it just got passed. And I said I didn't think it was fair at that time because I said, let's let them get started. Let's let them, they got some startup costs, they got, and, and so we've gone five years. So we felt that and, and, and you guys can, you know, you, you said uh, to me, I think you said to me, it's hard to compare O'Fallon, but we're, we're, we're fighting losing businesses and opportunities, our car dealerships and everything to O'Fallon. Hotels to O'Fallon. And O'Fallon, yet they're charging $1,000 a gaming sticker. They still made half of what we made last year. They made about, they made about 130-some thousand, I think it was. I think it was approximately, we, but we looked at, Jamie, did you look at it with me? It's on another sheet, but I looked it up. Aaron and I looked it up. They made about half, but they don't have as many liquor licenses as we have either. So Collinsville is up there. Um, so it, it's just, it's, it's a very tough time for economic development. 
Uh, it's, it's a very tough time to compete for some of these things that we're trying to get some retail. We want some retail here, but a lot of it's going out to the interstate. If I may, those two locations both have lower net terminal incomes than the city of Belleville, which tells you one of the problems with the fees and stuff. Neither one of those communities wanted video gaming and did it as a punitive initiative to their businesses in order to damage or hurt the industry. That was an intentional fee, the maximum rate at the time that they imposed it. And I you're, don't you're, think you'll find anybody that will disagree with that from that city and, and, government. And you're, and you're probably right. But like I said, they, they pay higher salaries than they, we do. They pay, they, they, they are attracting, they're, they're getting the, you know, they got. They're paying higher salaries to their employees than we can. Well, I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's the same way, Barry. We feel it too here. You know, um, there's no two ways about it. Um, but when you look around, you have to study, I'm not saying you have to base your decisions, but you have to study what the other communities around you are doing. O'Fallon's the second big, biggest city in southern Illinois, next to Belleville. And and um, like I said, we're we're uh, we're constantly in competition with them every day of the year for for new business and for keeping business. Um, and it's just it's one of those things. So you have to look at what they're doing. You can't yeah. be blind and not look yeah. at what their fees are. It's just reality. We have 80, 80 plus policemen on our police department. They have probably 40, 45. But you know, we, we, we have, we have good services. We're proud of our services. But yet, it's tough. It's tough for us this year. Um, tough year. I appreciate the opportunity to speak, sure. and I'll be happy to answer any other questions okay. later. Thank you. Alderman, do you have anything else? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Excuse me while I sit down. I'm Marilyn Newmeyer. I'm the secretary treasurer for the St. Clair County Licensed Beverage Association, and I'm also a trustee for the Village of Swansea. So I understand very well when you're talking about balancing your budget. We all go through it, and um, trying to compare this city to that city and how much they pay and how much that we don't pay and all this type of stuff is very hard considering you don't know the demographics of the medium income of everybody. Uh, I mean, it would take a, a lot of work to sit down and say, this person, this, this community, O'Fallon maybe pays more and all this type of stuff. I owned a tavern in Fairview Heights for 10 years. I sold it last year due to health reasons. And uh, I was very lucky from the fact that Fairview Heights charged no fees whatsoever. You know, but there again, Fairview Heights had mom and pop stores. And uh, I can tell you very well what the casino cafes do to the community because Fairview Heights had, I took a survey of uh, monies and uh, businesses in I think it was 2015. Uh, video gaming came in in 2012 and um, it was put in place, worked very hard, the Illinois Licensed Beverage Association, Association worked very hard to get the video gaming in place for the taverns because of we were hurting already at that time you know, because of the cost of everything. One of the costs we have to have, all of our bartenders have to have Bassett training, which is the training so that you know how to serve beers, recognize drunks. They also need food handlers certification, and now they're going for allergy training. This is all extra things that we have to do to keep our businesses open because they will shut you down if you don't have them. They, they, they come in and they check and they want to see your licenses for all your employees so that they, you're in compliance, you know. But what the casino cafes do, at the time I did it, 2015, there was 10 places in Fairview Heights that had video gaming. Two of them were Lucy's, the casino cafes. I took all the money and I divided it up and everything, you know, between who got what and all this type of stuff. What it averaged out to be was that the casino cafes were bringing in $20,000 a month, while the average of everybody else was $4,000 a month. So you bring them in, you'll get money from... from uh, the casino cafes, but you're going to hurt all these people yeah, because that, that money's going to go down if you, if you do that. That's why you know. we chose not to bring yeah. them in. Um, the other thing is so many times you said, oh, yes, you agree with everything we say and everything that you 
think needs to be changed. That's, but the point is, is that by the time you talk to all these other options that you're talking about, the lawyers, this one, the doctors, and all the other places, and all the other businesses, those will be in place already. They're already going to be paying that amount of money. And like I say, right now, if, if I still owned my business and if I didn't have the video gaming money, I would have closed it because I wouldn't have made it without the video gaming money. And it wasn't extra money. It was money I, I used some of it so that I could do some of the upgrades in my tavern that I had to, you know. But it wasn't big extra money. I don't think any of us are making extra money. If you look over the video gaming money that all the people in Belleville are receiving, they're all within a slight range. I tried very hard when Swansea got their um, video gaming to adopt the same thing that you had was 25% or 50% has to come from something other than gaming. Uh, it wasn't agreed upon, so we have a couple things, a couple uh, casino cafes in town. Um, are we making lots of money? No, we're not making lots of money. We're getting money, yeah. But, you know, there's only so many gamblers in the world. I don't care if you have 1,000 gaming places or if you have 50 gaming places. You only got so many people that are going to gamble. There's only so much money. So there's only so much money going out. So um, that's basically what I say, but, you know, we Alan, do a whole you, lot. You might be able to answer my question. You were in Fairview Heights. For example, some of the communities around us have a food and beverage tax. We don't. We have a 25, you have a... Um, a beverage tax. Beverage, we have a, a every, every month we have a beverage tax. And there again, what happened there was um, it was a 1% beverage tax that you had. So if you made $10,000 you know, a month, you reported that to the state, the st and the community got uh, 1%. Fairview Heights got 1% of the $10,000 you reported to the state. Then you turned around and you reported the same $10,000 to Fairview Heights, and you paid 1%. So now they got 2%, and that was to pay for the new firehouse that they have on the... Um, uh, it, on, I forgot the street, it's on, it's by the donut place. Yeah. And uh, then the other thing is that now they raised it for 2%, it's 2% for, to pay for the new and, fitness center. And I think a couple other cities have it. Collinsville might, I'm not sure, but we don't. No, we, you don't. We don't have, I, I wanted to say that last time, I forgot. We don't have a beverage tax, mm -hmm. and we've never talked about that mm -hmm. because we didn't want to just keep nickel and dime in the same people. I mean, that was something we had conscious in my years here. These, this tax is going you know, to hurt these people. It's going to hurt them bad. You know, you can't afford to lose any more places. You can't. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're coming up on an hour. Yes, sir. Are you aware, though, Alderman Tyler, that the festivals downtown, they didn't pay nothing when I became mayor, but they are up to where they pay back 80% of what the city's costs are. They pay 80%. Jamie, Arden Square, give me an example. What did they, what was the bill? Do you remember hypothetically? You got Oktoberfest on top of it. going to be paying $20,000 for the next Oktoberfest. They pay, they'll pay 20000 back to the city. Now, when I became mayor, we didn't charge a dime, but we, we couldn't keep this up. So we did it gradual. My proposal to the council at that time was that we raise that gradually. But these festivals in Arnold Square, they're making some money, but they pay us back 80% of what... Now, praise, you're right. There's nobody, like I said, we can't charge Santa Claus. Sure. You know, we're not going to charge, we never charge the Labor Day Parade, the unions, we never charge the, we, we never charge the Shriners. And I'm not saying get rid of all the police or the fire or the police department, I'm just saying maybe if we could just cut, you know, every third one. 
Well, now let me tell you this, though. I leave those decisions up to the administration of the police and fire department for safety. In the world we live in today, with people driving cars into crowds and everything else, we, we've, had more, we've had to have more police at these festivals, and knock on wood, we've been lucky so far with safety, but providing safety when you get a, a fountain full of people downtown is a tough thing to do. And you have to have the man, men and women who are properly trained and skilled to be down here to protect so people want to come to Belleville. So we can't give them a sense, false sense. We can't cut, you can't cut every, say you're going to cut every other intersection during the Shriners Parade uh, and have somebody struck by a car or a car run over and have no police within two blocks in either direction. Well, you I can't mean, do that. You know, I mean, we can put up barricades every other We place. have barricades so, at every one. Yeah. As, as you alluded to, some of you just yourselves, you know, Fishers had an 82-year run and they closed. Well, if every business went into business who could make it 80 years, you'd all be darn happy. I would be happy with my business, my, our flower shop, if, it, if I knew it was going to last 80 years. But my point is, we've had a number of businesses this year who've gone away. And, and then we're fortunate enough to pick up a few new ones. And all in all, it's pretty well awash. Now, you know, Scott, I'm just going to say this. You know, somebody said to me, because we talked about the last meeting, oh, you have a 3% raise this year for city employees. You're one of them. Well, now, hold on, hold on, let me finish. But what you didn't hear last time, almost every union, and we have nine unions, settled on a four-year contract, came back to us and said, and, the, and we were already a year behind at the time, I believe, so they were 2%, 2%, 2%, and the final was, hey, we'll take a fourth year if you'll go 3%. And at that time, the city council voted, and I don't know the vote, but I think it was probably close to an unanimous that we voted for those contracts. So yes, people are getting, including yourself, are getting, the only people not getting a 3% raise this year are Jenny and I uh, and, and, and Dean. We're getting a 2% because that's what was voted on for elected officials. Now, of the four terms I've been here, We've only gotten raises two terms. So it, we haven't always gotten a raise. So I'm just saying, but, but 3% is a good raise, but that was voted on because of the contract. Mr. Kinsella? I'd also like to mention that um, uh, our unions all went with no raises for a while. And Most unions took two years of zero. And that was the other reason we looked at these contracts this time, the two, 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 and three. There was only one union didn't take a zero. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, we really want to get into this. We came with a three-year contract, I believe, and the city offered the fourth-year three percent. City's idea, I believe. No, it was the union. It, no, not it, only the police. I mean, not only fire, but all the unions. I know. It was the city's idea to get three percent. It wasn't the union. No, no. There was a union that came forth and said, "If we go a fourth year, will you go three percent a fourth year?" And then once that was talked about amongst the union people, everybody came forward and said, Jamie, am I correct? You were in the negotiations with us. Everybody came in and said, me too. That's the clause, me too. Now, don't get me wrong. We have great relationships with our unions. And like I tell you, virtually many of the unions during the tough times of the recession took two years with a zero. Most unions all took at least one, correct, Jamie? One union only didn't take a, refused to take a zero. And, and so we've, we've, had good, we've had good cooperation, very good cooperation. We have a good working relationship. Yes, sir? <clears throat> Thank you for letting us come out this evening. No problem. Um, my name is Lonnie Casey. I own Night Moves, which is over on McClintock. Okay. So 
And by the way, thanks for taking that house down, by the way. Um, Those are the other parts of our job. Um, I'm glad that we, get a, we have got a lot of support from the aldermen on behalf of a few of these raises, but there's a couple of things I want to, I don't, I don't think that even as a business owner here in Belleville, I reside in Mascuda, I've owned a tire and auto repair business for 28 years. Um, I, I believe in doing business here for Night Moves, and I believe in doing business there for Lonnie's Tire and Auto, because that's just the way it should be. Now, one thing I can tell you is internet sales is, is going to kill everybody. I agree with you. And I'm going to tell you something. If, if, if you guys want to put your face on the map, I think we've got a, a good end. I, I really been focusing on this with a couple of uh, young guys who's really into the computer industry that's really good. And they said for a community to reach some of this revenue and to realize, like the gentleman stressed the other day, you get up at 3 in the morning, you go order something from Amazon with no tax. Mm -hmm. Just like I can order flowers with no tax. Yeah. If you watch, if you focus on PayPal, PayPal is what is going to open the door for our cities to get this revenue. It can, it can happen. Um, it's not going to be through the internet, okay? But it's going to be through the credit cards. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be um, where it's going to be a, um, a privacy thing. This is something that people are avoiding. This is a legal action. We should not be able to, I can send you a set of tires to St. Louis, Missouri for $400 and not charge tax and it's perfectly legal. And you can go pick them up well, over there. And I, I agree with you, and that's wrong. And that's one of the meetings I was at in Washington this past week was about marketplace fairness in the state of Illinois. And we're, we're lobbying to the, the federal administrator, uh, uh, legislators that there has to be some marketplace fairness. It's, it's these, this, uh, these taxes that are not, these, these types of industries on the internet, et cetera, not charging tax isn't fair to the local businesses. We provide services for your, the businesses that are in town, and yet a lot of the stuff's bought online, and, and we don't get any tax out of it. And it's, it's noticeable. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I agree with you. This is correct, but keep in mind that I have people that want to bring their tires into my shop okay. and put them on. My question is, do you have used tires or do you have new? And then my second question is, where'd you buy them? If you bought them online, there might be a good chance I don't want your business because you didn't give me a chance. Because 90% of every time somebody walks in my door with those tires they bought off the internet, even without the tax and they paid the freight and they paid me the $100 just to mount and balance them, they have, they have spent more out of their pocket and they don't even realize it. They just thought they made, and they don't even have a warranty. Try to get warranty from Tire Rack. Good luck. Right. So that's just one thing I want to stress about the sales tax thing. You talked only 0.6%. That's horrible. You know, I agree. We got the same problem in our town there. I love doing business in Belleville. I think it's great. I think the machines has really helped my business. But I really think you need to, the other thing I want to focus on is I really spent some time, um, and I want to thank Barry. For, for pointing this out to me. 15 years ago, 50% of all alcohol sales, 50-50, was liquor stores, Walmarts, um, anybody who sold packaged liquor, and then the other 50% was at the bars. Today, it's a proven fact, 20% at the bar, 80% of the liquor stores. And I, this has been brought up to me, sir, and I, I think we have to look at that Class C license, and I think we will. But once again, that's some of the good dialogue that came out of this. But I'm saying I don't know. They're going to get the $150, 150 increase, right, Jenny? That's part of it, Jamie. 
But, you know, it might be that that's one we come back with next year and look at the, 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 the grocery stores and liquor stores and maybe that, and maybe that's how we end up sitting down because you're right. And we make a lot of police calls there with shoplifting and that. There's a lot, you know, this, there's a wear on the services for some of these things that deal with, with, with liquor. There really is. So we hear you. We're going to look at it. We really are. But I think the, the, the big thing I want you to walk away with, and I'm not saying we can't look at it, the council can't, because the council can do whatever they vote on. I'm not saying we can't still look at next April's. But I will tell you, everybody, you know, you can say it, but you guys know it too. Um, we vote on the raises. We, we locked in some of these contracts. We owe them. You know, we are a bare bones budget. I, I'm, I'm just, and some of you want to come in. Some of you have come in and sat with Jamie, but I, I'm not trying to welcome more work on her, but I think she would gladly invite any of you to come sit down one-on-one -on -one and go through the budget if you haven't. And we really, we've invited that, but there's been very few questions the last couple of weeks since the budget's been out. But I will tell you, our staff has cut. We are bare bones. Uh, we really are, and, and we're, we're just crossing our fingers. We don't have any disasters and any major street collapses or anything else because we've tried to keep prices and, and, and expenses down, and we've tried to keep as many cops as we can on the street, and we've tried to keep all four firehouses open so we can keep our Class II um, ISO rating. But the police and fire are the most expensive thing and, and that's the services that we all, I think, agree we, we need, but they're expensive. Any, any, I didn't mean, you know, anything else? No, and the last thing is, the only thing I wanted to let you know is that, you know, the smoking ban, I mean, for, for those of us bars that really kept the clean atmosphere inside, that did keep thorough uh, ventilation, smoke eaters, um, it didn't matter. It was it was a state thing. Um, if you go down south, you never you never would acknowledge it ever happened. But uh, I do appreciate the fact. Uh, have an asthma that I, we don't have it. But I tell you what, it really it really put a damper on alcohol sales. And and I will say this: that was another reason that consciously, when we had conversations amongst our people on my staff and a lot of the aldermen, that's another reason. Uh, that we were very cautious not to raise liquor licenses because we know the smoking ban did hurt you. We know it did. And, and, and we can debate all day. Honestly, I'm glad to not personally go in a restaurant and sit there with somebody smoking at the table right next to me when I'm eating my dinner. But however, I do know it was an effect on your business. And that's, and that's one of the reasons, too, many of us stood up for the gaming because we know you needed something. There was a, there was a, there was a hit with smoking, then there was a recession, and you know, and gaming was one of those things, thank goodness, it did come along, and that the voters did vote for it. I agree with you. And one last thing is, when you're getting back to this internet sales, I mean, these people are doing this for a business. I know a guy that made six figures last year, and I don't think he paid any income tax. And I would... And I'm going to tell you, what you need to realize, you guys got neighborhood watch all over. If you see that UPS truck stopping over this house over here about six times a week, well, you they, probably know something's and, going on. And you need to call us because in that case, if they're running a business out of their home, it's a zoning issue. And that's something we can do something about. But the other thing, you just struck a good point. All of you in here, and the aldermen as well, we need to contact our legislators in the state. And we need to be telling them, please, come make sure you follow through on these, as these laws that are pending about the Internet sales, about the fair market tax. And then they need to get on the federal as well, our people, because this is a big. Hey, if we got a, if we got, um, if we got a better chunk of the sales tax back, we might be looking at our budget a little different too. So it, it it is that trickle down effect, no matter if you want to use that term or not. But we're all feeling it because we're getting we're getting yanked from different directions, or cut from different directions. Mayor, the only thing I'm saying is that if you if you do raise it. You're not going to give it back if you get all this resolved. I know you're not going to give it well, back to I'm, us. I'm definitely not saying, I'm, I'm not lying to you. We need to raise 100 now. Uh, I think based on the fact that we are just beginning a review of other fees and other business licenses, 
we may have a proposal because of that that we can make an adjustment on the one that I, I said my proposal was to then put the second hundred off to next April. So what's going to happen Monday night is we, we need we need to balance the budget. And I'm not trying to say, but, but and, and you, I already explained, gaming fees aren't going to make up for a big chunk of the budget. But we're down to the penny here trying to balance it. If we can get this moving and, and have an increase in the liquor license uh, May 1st and $100 in gaming stickers, I think the rest we can continue to work at and we continue to have this dialogue. Um, and, and we can come up with a review of other, other fees. But we have, to, we have to work through our city attorney who's not here tonight, and we have to look at how we can go about it. Okay? Well, I think, like you said, you don't have a whole lot of time to, to, to make a decision because you got a, you got a budget. But like, like Scott Tyler said, I'm sure that you really could find a way to fix this without raising anything to us. I'm asking, I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking you and I'm asking the alderman. I don't want no raise. Well, and that's... You know, I'm just telling you that, you I know, straight I, up... I understand. I don't like it when you, I get a bill increased at home. Or I, like I told, if you weren't here last meeting, we hated it when we got the increase from Ameren for a $60,000 increase for one year for streetlights. But we had to pay it. I know that, Mayor, but listen, you're... If you could go after these businesses, like you go after like these people that's got these occupancy permits, if you had an organization doing that, how much would it cost and how much would you gain? Did you ever think of it? I mean, like he said, how many businesses do you have that probably operate without a business license? We don't even know. And just like I said about that guy that's bragging about all the money he made off the internet. I mean, I'm just saying that I know it's your call, and it isn't going to matter. We're going to pay it. But thanks for the time just to voice my opinion because okay. I, I, I don't want to get You're I'll welcome. say much more. Thank Alderman you. Alderman Randall, you can go, and then we'll the next gentleman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank all the business owners for their remarks tonight. I uh, appreciate everything that you've uh, come to the table with, and uh, I empathize with you uh, deeply. One of the things that I've heard that uh, strikes the tongue with me and seems not just a burden placed on the hospitality industry itself. Whether we can tie it to the fire instruct inspection, um, that might be a thing for the city attorney to figure out. But what I'm really concerned about is why we have to wait until next April to do this. Why it couldn't be instituted, say, by September, October, prorate the fee, and then implement the full fee across these businesses in April 2019. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. Well, we have the ability to raise a fee at any time. We've tried to be reasonable and not to be confusing to people, and we've tried to do them at the beginning of the new fiscal years. We've just tried. That's the way we've usually done it. Is that, you know, that's fair to say? It's not to say we've never raised a fee in a different time of year, because that would be untrue. But most of them are reviewed, and... And for example, all of you in here, if you don't know this, listen up. When you get your letter, and that's one of the reasons we got to take some action on this next, next week, because the letters have to go out for your renewal, and you have to update the information. Because one of the things I mentioned, and maybe some heard, maybe some didn't, the state has gotten extremely much more challenging to us. They're going to come in and audit all of our files. Your information has to be current. If they find the city, you know, because your files aren't up to date, you know, who's your, who has 5% or more ownership? Are you all background checked? You know, are all your, you know, are your corporation papers up to date? Are they on file with the Secretary of State? They're getting a lot more difficult. We come around and, and, and we haven't raised these fees in 10 years, but we have to do compliance checks with the police. When we do compliance checks, we're paying overtime to the police officers to, and, they, and the chief does this randomly, unless we have a complaint about a certain address that's selling to minors, then we'll go to them. But they pick 
randomly, they pick names out of the hat or numbers out of a hat. And that's how they do so many every quarter. But every time we do a compliance check, it costs us overtime to do that. But yet if we don't do any compliance checks, then the state liquor commissioner is looking at us saying, well, how come you're not, how come you're not checking on these places? So there's just a lot, there's a lot to it. And, and so we have to make sure that we, that we follow the rules and, and, and you know, because this gentleman here in the purple first. Okay. I'll make it quick. Uh, sales tax. Can you, can you, you're, your you're can you state your name, please? Bruce Hampton. You're losing a ton of sales tax, and I talked to the representatives and state senators, and they're, they're mad about the same deal with the, the liquor, uh, packaged liquor giving the liquor away. So every case of beer, you're making 32 cents, and they're paying you 96 cents. And being the home rule, you could put a tax on this and well, raise I, a lot of money. And I told you, we're going to look at that. We really are. A lot of money. Because until this discussion in the last 10 days, <laughs> on really, didn't, liquor. really that conversation didn't really come to us about two weeks ago. Yeah. But with package liquor, the state is frustrated with the same events. Yeah. That they can't, they can't do anything, their hands are tied. And, but with a home rule, you can make a little money to offset them paying you a dollar a case and, and 240 for a, a bottle of, of uh, liquor where they're, you're still getting 32 cents and 32 cents. That's a lot of money you're losing here. So I just wanted to point this fact that. out to you. That's a good point. You know. But I, I don't disagree. We're going to look at the Class C, which is our but liquor stores and, and convenient marts, et cetera. I have... Uh, all my fees I pay as a vendor, and just for jukeboxes, I pay in other communities $100 for every community. I have to show my FIN numbers. I have to have all my numbers. I have to give them a ton of information to have a business license. And uh, some of them want insurance. So, you know, there's other things you can look at. And I appreciate your time, and thank you very much. Okay. Yes, sir. You had your hand up. Hi, uh, Keith Shell from the Edge. You know, um, a, a couple of things. First, from a, we're looking at a cycle that's going around the state. We know what's going on. I mean, we have to know what's going on, right? We have our state's been doing it differently than other states for some time now, and the problem's been brewing. I moved to the state 25, 26 years ago. And uh, they were talking about it then, talking about problems with uh, um, the pension system, the benefit system, how we're paying more out than what we're putting into it, and that we're doing it differently, both on a state level and a local level, that we need to address these, otherwise it's going to come and, really come and bite us. Well, we've kicked the can. The can's been kicked. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long, long time, but nothing changes. And the problem that Jamie's facing, you guys are facing, is that more and more your budget's going to be continuing exponentially. If, and if you've looked at future pension paths for what's going to happen to the city budget, is more and more of those are going to be eating away. We're going to have to raise more and more taxes. So the spiral problem that we're all facing is just going to continue. People are leaving because of high taxes our budget situation is going to continue to be exasperated exponentially because of it. And we're all going to be continue to, at one point, we're going to say enough's enough. We're already facing it here in St. Clair County. I mean, we have the highest, one of the highest property taxes in the country. And I'm sure if you guys have probably heard that, but if you don't know it, it's an absolute fact. We are one of the higher counties in the entire country when it comes to property tax. And it's not just about St. Clare County, it's about the city. It's all, everybody's on that same system. That system is bankrupting us. But nobody wants to address it and, and change it. And I think the people receiving the, the, the benefits from this system, if they knew truly that they were bankrupting us, they wouldn't want to do it. They wouldn't. They would say, wait a minute, pause, time out, let's save our community. What would save our community, I truly believe this, being an outsider now and been here for this amount of time, 
first of all, there's, we've got wonderful people. I mean, it's, that's why I love this area. I fell in love with it so much. Never even heard of Belleville before I met my wife. And now I live here, and I, 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 we believe in it. We've invested so much of our time, energy. And we've, you guys see, if you haven't been in, come see. We've spent a ton of money. I mean, I've never worked harder in my life than I've worked over the last year. It, it, and we love it. I mean, I've loved it, the fact that I'm here and doing it. But man, is it expensive. It's a lot more expensive for us to operate here than it is in other parts of the country. It's, it's really a lot more expensive to operate here than it is right across the river in St. Louis and in and, and that area. And it's more prosperous across the river in there because they have a higher income, they have lower taxes, lower minimum wage, a number of factors. But we're not leaving. We're vested in. We want to find a solution. So where's, we, you talk about a bare bones budget. I, I scoff at that when I hear a bare bones budget, when I hear 700,000 in overtime. Are you freaking kidding me? Now, understand, it, you didn't hear. I mean, just clarify this before this gets put in the paper wrong. A lot of that overtime, we're reimbursed for. Every time a high school has policemen a football game or a basketball game, they have to have it by but their, their standards. They have to have people. They pay us for that. Now, we're paying 700000 this year in overtime, but we're reimbursed for a good chunk of it. But there's a lot of it that we can't control, Keith. We can't, you can't even add. If you, have a, if you have somebody held hostage in a house and you have to call the SWAT team out, we can't plan for that. Oh. Or we have a homicide, and, and we only have zero to one most years, thank God, but you have a violent crime. You have to have every detective you have canvassing a neighborhood. Overtime in the police department is very hard to anticipate, but we do get reimbursed, and that's why I tried to explain a while ago, we also get reimbursed for up to 80% for these major festivals now. Or every time we have a run, they're all paying their share now, right? Correct. Well, they're paying 100% plus Correct. the runs. So we're not, we want them, but we're making them pay for the police and that stuff. They're, they're you know, but that goes into the overtime reimbursement. So understand and, and, that. And, 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 Trust me, this is not an attack on the police department. This is not an attack on anything. It's just a matter of about, you know, why we've been successful is we've been innovative. We've always looked at ways. We've always, when challenges face us and they challenge and we get faced with things all the time, we figure out how to overcome it. What I don't see in, I don't see a lot of is overcoming what's causing the problem to cause all of our taxes to be raised. The, if you look at one thing, okay, if you, talk, if you just think about this, okay, and, and, and I think this is important, that if the income of our city, the per capita income is flat or going up at one or two percent a year, you sure as heck don't want your employees of the city's raises going up at a higher rate, right? If, if, if you're increasing the wages of the public sector faster than the private sector, the only choice is to increase taxes, which then makes the gap between the public and the private increase more. And what we have in the last 15 years, if you look at the, the numbers, you have a, a significant gap change between private and public. And then you couple that with a significant increase in pension benefit payouts and benefit pounds, then we're looking at a, a deficit that the, we're going to have to pay more. Okay, ten years from now, uh, uh, what happened to your tax bills in the last ten years? Right? I'll tell you what happened to ours. Okay, in 1998, when we bought that building, we were paying five thousand dollars a year, and yeah, did we improve it? Yeah, we invested money in it. But we're paying, we paid last year, we paid 51000 And with the new improvement, we're going to be paying over 100000 that is the estimate. Now think about that. I mean, that's just, it's staggering. And, and it's, it's staggering to me. And when we paid, we paid $25,000 for, for the right to build, right, for a building permit and a, a sewer tap fee. We paid 5000 we're going to pay $5,000 this year for fees just for our video arcade games. I mean, but, it goes on and on and but on. We, but the city did help you, Keith. 
They didn't Correct. help. They did the, what they helped us with is that they gave, they gave us a street. Okay. No, but and they gave. We we've done a development agreement with you a couple of times now for as tax rebates. Now, the, and let's talk. If you want to talk the tax rebates, I mean, the one that we benefited the most from absolutely is we didn't have to pay sales tax on building materials. Did not cost the city anything. Okay. It did not cost them a dime. We don't build. They don't get a dime. Okay. So that's a that's a it's a revenue neutral grant that we got from the city. And, and, and so, so I would think that's important, right? The second thing we got was a, the first time it was a 25% re reduction for five years on incremental property tax increase. Mm -hmm. Well, so we went from 17, I to believe it got up to 35,000 was the jump that year. And so I'm thinking, oh, we're going to get 25 percent kickback on that, on that incremental increase. So I'm thinking I'm going to get like five grand right back. Well, we get our $1,800 back. Well, oh, it's 25 percent on the enterprise zone only incremental tax part. So we get, we didn't get, our property tax bill went up uh, more than doubled, but we didn't get 25 percent of that increase back. We only got that sliver of it back. And that wasn't explained in the development agreement. It wasn't, I mean, I didn't, I'm not saying you're trying to be deceitful or anything like that at all. There's, it was, there's no deception there. It was just the way I was shocked at that. I was expecting more back. So yes, we did get a, we got a, we got a help. We got eight, so far we've gotten $1,800, no, $3,600 back is what we've received back cash on probably $60,000 in Real estate taxes. Okay, well, that's that's what we got back. I, it's not fair that we. I'm not grilling your project here tonight, but I'd be glad to have you come in and sit down and go over it. Because, and I'm not. I'm not here. And to, I might have some misconceptions, but. But I'm but, not here to argue about what we did or didn't get. Okay, because what we've received is way less than what anybody else has received from what we. I mean, we've not ever gotten money from compared to what everybody else has received. I mean, that's that's a fact, and you can look into it. What. That's not the issue here. The issue is we're being taxed more than other businesses. And it, I know the reason, though. It's easy because you have our liquor license numbers, right? It's easy because we're on record. We have to be because we have our liquor license with you because when you have that information, it's an easy target. But because you don't have the names of other businesses, you don't have a list, well, that'd be a little bit more work to get a, a fee for all of them. We've always been that target. Why would our business, what for God's sakes, for a business that does so much for the community and makes so less, you're taxing the least earners more. It's, it's a, it, God, there, if we've been talking about a progressive tax. Tax the people that make more. Don't tax, tax the lawyers, right? I mean, tax, I mean, don't tax the people that make less. So, okay. uh, that's, thank you. That, that's my thing. Okay, Joe, you had your hand up. reference when we were talking about the overtime with the police department that we are in the middle of the works of establishing an auxiliary police force which could help we're trying to bring it back that's true it might help in some cases but we're in a process of studying that again there was some changes in the law for a while but we're looking at that so we do look at ideas yeah no we're, we're looking at a lot of ideals we're, we're constantly got our eyes open and 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 um, you know we're mandated to pay the pensions and, and when, the, when the policeman or fireman puts in 30 years, they deserve their pension. And, 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 the, and yes, it's true. Prior to 1997, the city council kicked the can many years down the road and didn't properly fund the pensions. But I can tell you, since 1997, we've paid the actuary every year, what the state actuaries have been. And we paid that amount. And slowly we're getting caught up, but it's a long adventure because they went a lot of years where they underfunded the pensions. I wasn't here, but we're we're all paying we're paying that price. Okay, yes, sir. Probably have you be the last one, and then um, certainly you can you know email stuff in if you got questions. If there's other financial questions this week, there will be a meeting Monday night at seven in this room. I would hope that we don't have to go rehash everything that was said tonight. 
but uh, we'll certainly, if you think of something new, you're certainly available to step up and, and, and bring it forth. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is A.P. Moore, and I'm with A.P. Gaming. I actually own it. I'm a terminal operator. I'm the guy that's going to get beat on, apparently, but that's besides the point. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know if the city actually knows what goes on with other type of liquor establishments. Like a convenience store in the city, there is no permit for them to cash a check. And let's say somebody comes in with a payroll check and it's $700. You pay that person 5% of what that check is to cash that check. Does the city make a penny off of that or have a permit for that? Not to my knowledge, but you're, you know. And I'm all, all of them do it. Not a few. I'm talking all of them that are considered liquor store convenience stores. And you, you, I'm sure that nobody here even knows that. That that's a service, and I mean, you know what people I'm talking about. You go in, give them the check, they run the check through telecheck, they collect a fee off of people that shouldn't be cashing the check there to begin with, but they have no access to a bank account. The city doesn't make anything off of those people cashing those checks. Same way with whenever they go to get liquor. They come in, liquor salesman comes in, what do you got on sale? That's all that they will order, and they order it where these people can't order as much as what they're ordering because they're giving it away to get the person in there to cash that check. And I'm talking about big money. Some of these guys are making $10,000 a week cashing checks. A week. You bring a point I wasn't aware of or I wasn't... Oh, it's a, it's a, and I, I'm sure that the Belleville police know it goes on because well, I'm we, sure that they get called to these places over people arguing over the amount of money that's given, have to give to the clerk for cashing their check. You bring a very good point. We're going to look at it that too. Because, and you know, I mean, all fairness to them, whenever these guys do order liquor, you know, five cases of Crown Royal, Apple or whatever, well, they're selling it at what they're paying for a bottle. They're selling it out of the convenience store. They have no extra tax, no nothing. And I mean, it's getting like I told, I said a minute ago, in the last two weeks or two and a half weeks ago, whenever the first person said it to me, it's really the first time I really focused on that. Now that was good conversation. It actually was probably three weeks ago and it was up in my office during a Oktoberfest committee or something, or a, it was during a marketing committee meeting when one of the people brought to my attention about the class C license. So I think we're going to have to, we're going to look at it. I, I will tell you, we're going to look at it. You bring some valid points. But like I said, the, the biggest thing I think you're going to see Monday night that I'm, it's going to be on the agenda because it came from finance, is, is the uh, um, proposal to increase the liquor license and to go up $100 this April. And that's the two things that we're going to see this, this Monday night. Well, can you, can, uh, can well and, the, and the terminal operator's license we're going to institute one. We never had one. The 500. Yeah, you don't pay I, a terminal I, operator's license in Belleville, but you do a lot of cities. Well, I knew that was going to happen. But, but you didn't know it. I mean, you, I didn't know it. You could have came to me and told me then, why aren't we doing that? <laughs> but I mean, we never did it. I mean, I'll be honest with you, until somebody brought that up, I didn't know, I didn't know how many cities were doing it until we did a little research. So we're, we're just, we're trying to work smarter. We're trying to spread this out. It's but can the city a impose a sales tax on these convenience stores? No, I'm not opposed to that at all. No, can work. they, though, legally? What's that? Can they impose a, a city sales tax on these convenience stores? I don't know if we can do that. They're already paying sales tax. Huh? Well, we'd have to look at a fee. We're going to have to talk to the city attorney. We've got to make sure we stay in bounds. I, I do think we're going to take a look at you bring. It was brought up to me just recently. And I never gave it a whole lot of thought because I've never sold alcohol. You know, I've, I've had a florist and I've had a chimney sweep business. So I, I didn't have, I never, I don't have the experience with alcohol other than having a few sips in my life. But I can tell you, um, you make a good point when, when they can buy it so much cheaper by the case instead of a volume, that makes a good point. So I think we're going to have to look at that Class C license. And, and we will. There's been some good dialogue in the last couple of days. And we can have that. But I just want you to understand, too, and we're not bellyaching, 
we we are you know there is a need to to raise some fees there's a need to evaluate them because operating a city is not cheap either you know it's, it's very expensive and I, I'll just say again because it was commented you know we have good benefits but our, our, our comparing some other cities our professional people aren't making the same salaries as they are in some of the neighboring communities and we're the biggest city and, I'm, and, and we're trying to get we're trying to get fair and parity and we're trying to but you know I told you before I told somebody last week you know police chief in O'Fallon makes twenty thousand dollars more than our police chief and probably just about every ranking officer does you know and they got twenty thousand people less than us but it is it is what it is we're trying to we're trying to hang on we're trying to be fair and we're trying to still at the same time grow the city and it, it's a, it's a it's a lot of balancing I won't I won't lie to you and then when you have a state that's in the shape it's in um, it, it's been very difficult so I thank you for your comments sure. yes ma'am this is this is this is gonna be the last comment tonight because we're we're, we're fastly approaching two hours. Well, I'm Mary Domshell, and don't worry, I'm much briefer than Keith. I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for coming out today. We really appreciate you coming out for our special meeting. I would just like to end this. We just want a level playing field. A $100 license fee, I think, is reasonable on every business in Belleville. I don't think it should be just on the hospitality industry. I think everyone should pay their fair share because everyone benefits from fire department, from police departments, from the streets. Everybody benefits from the city services. Why wouldn't everybody have a little bit of skin in the game? And that's all I wanted to say, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's nothing further, we will, like I said, if somebody comes up with something new, don't hesitate to call. If you have a question you thought about after you get out of here, don't hesitate to email or call. And if you have something new and you have a sudden, uh, you know, new thought, uh, we'll gladly call on you at... Uh, public participation on Monday evening. Uh, hearing no other questions, this was not a vote of any kind. I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Motion and a second. Randall and say. All in favor, signify. Scott, let's vote before we walk out. Okay, hang on. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries.